Our superhero gadgets are future lifesavers. This is the University of the Netherlands. Now, wouldn't it be great to just snap your fingers with an infinity gauntlet, just like this, and make things happen in an instant? For example, maybe you'd like to have superpowers, or even better, have technologies that are inspired by superheroes and superpowers that could be for the betterment of society. Well, I'm going to put this down because you're going to see it again later. I am a physicist and a science communicator, and I am extremely passionate about telling stories about innovative research from around the world. But not only that, I'm a massive fan of superhero films and the superhero genre. Now, when I go and watch a film for the first time, I watch it to enjoy it. And every other time after that, and there are many times, I analyze the films to figure out the science behind the powers and the scenes we see in these films. And because of this, I've become known as the superhero scientist. But if the truth be told, I really am just an ordinary scientist. Now, when I watch these superhero films, I ask myself questions. I want to be inspired by them. Some of the questions I ask myself are, how can we use superheroes and their powers to inspire innovations in the future? How can superpowers and the adventures of superheroes inspire my research and my writing? Now, I don't want to promote the development of irresponsible superpowers. There are many scientists around the world, but none of them, I can tell you, unless they're doing it in secret, are aiming to create superpowers. Most of them are following proper ethical practice with the aim of creating technologies that are human-centered in their design. The question I want to talk about is how can superheroes and the gadgets they have inspire life-saving technologies in the future? Now, Tony Stark, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he built the Iron Man suit, which many may view as the ultimate wearable technology. Well, Tony Stark isn't the only person to have built this suit. In the comic books, Riri Williams, a 15-year-old MIT undergraduate student, she reverse engineers the Iron Man suit to build her own version of the Iron Man suit called the Iron Heart suit. Now, the Iron Man suit and the Iron Heart suit are both examples of exoskeleton suits. These are technologies that can be worn outside the body. And for centuries, we have been creating exoskeleton suits. Just think of the armor worn by medieval knights. Now, today we are trying to create exoskeleton suits for the betterment of society, to help people. While Iron Man built his suits to fight villains and protect him during that, exoskeleton suits are being made, and the aim is to have an impact on healthcare. There are many companies who are looking to develop exoskeleton suits for paraplegics and quadriplegics. One example of such a company is Rewalk Robotics. They are trying to develop and are developing various exoskeleton suits. One of their suits is the Rewalk system, a lower body exoskeleton suit that can be worn by a paraplegic and give them back mobility. Something that most of us take for granted. Now that's an example of an electronic suit. There are also passive suits. Those are suits that do not have electronics in them. This is an example of a passive suit. This is the Levio exoskeleton suit. It has no batteries, no power. This suit has been developed with the aim of minimizing any stress or strain on your body. Now, the principal aim or the principal design aspects put into this were for people who work in medical healthcare, who may be lifting patients out of beds and moving, moving them to trolleys, or if somebody's working in logistics in a factory and they're in a position like this all day and they're moving boxes from one point to another. Now, the device works like this. It's got a chest plate here at the, at the, at the center of the, of the device. And when you lean down, that chest plate pushes up against you, keeping your body and posture in the correct, in the correct way. And it's got two leg uh, braces here, which take some of the load or weight from your upper body and distribute it to your, to your legs. And in the hips, there are two springs, which you, will, you would feel deforming. And when you move upwards, you'll feel a little bit of a kick from, this, from the springs in this device. It is a brilliant piece of technology. 
in terms of where we could go with these exoskeleton suits, it would be fantastic if we could think about combining this with something else to mimic how our body naturally controls our limbs. So when you want to walk, you make a decision and you just walk. Unconsciously, you decide and move in a certain direction. And you don't think about that too much, but what's happening is inside your brain, your neurons are sending electrical signals through your nervous system to the muscles of your body to get your body to move in a certain way. Now, when people are using the electronic exoskeleton suits, most of them involve joysticks that um, you have to maneuver to control the suit. So in reality, instead of the person thinking about moving the suit, it's the suit that moves the person's legs. Would be great if we could copy the natural process in the human body. One way to do this is with brain-computer interfaces. A brain-computer interface is a device that can measure the electrical signals that emanate from the neurons in your brain and then use those to power some external device, like an exoskeleton suit. Now, this mind-reading technology kind of sounds like Charles Xavier from the X-Men. Now, there are many ways to measure brain waves from the body, and I think the best way to do this is in a non-invasive manner, and that's to use a technology like EEG, which is just basically a set of electrodes that measure brain waves from your body. Now, this is an example of an EEG device. It's quite cheap. Now, this one, unfortunately, does not allow me to control an exoskeleton suit, but I'm going to explain how it works in a moment. It's called the Muse 2, and I can put this on my forehead and just adjust it. And what you have there is a device which has a number of electrodes at the front, and those electrodes stay in contact with my forehead. And this is a device for meditation. You have your mobile phone, you sit in a nice quiet room, you want to relax. When the neurons are firing quite a lot, you'll hear thunderstorms. When you've suitably relaxed and your neurons aren't firing as frequently, you'll hear birds singing. And it rewards you in this meditative process. Now, the idea of combining this EEG technology or EEG electrodes with an exoskeleton suit is something that researchers are exploring at the moment around the world. Now, traditionally, you might have seen an EEG device or, or electrodes as this kind of a swimming hat with lots of electrodes. And I have no doubt that Tony Stark, when he built the Iron Man suit, or when Riri Williams built the Iron Heart suit, that they both included a brain-computer interface based on EEG technology in the suit. Now, while an Iron Man suit might protect the, protect the wearer, and it also includes many advanced health, health devices such as medical sensors and biosensors, there is a little bit of a catch towards developing very advanced exoskeleton suits. And the catch is this. They might help people to walk, but some will use this technology for more sinister applications. That's the thing about new technology and the coolest of technology. We must be thinking about these technologies in an ethical and responsible manner, not just during the innovative process, but at the very start. It is imperative that designers, that engineers and physicists, biologists and chemists sit with ethicists together and make decisions on how technology should be built to make sure that they can have the best benefit for society. Another technology that might require some ethical thought in the future is an invisibility cloak. Now, Sue Storm of the Fantastic Four has the power of invisibility. And you might think that it is science fiction. Well, invisibility is very much science fact. This is a picture of me demonstrating a real invisibility cloak. This is not a trick. I still have my fingers, so nothing bad has happened to me. It is called the Rochester Cloak. It was developed at the University of Rochester in 2014 by researchers there who published their work in the journal Optics Express. And I have it here beside me. And I'm going to explain how it works. It is four optical lenses. And what happens is that when light hits Smart Hulk here from Avengers Endgame, that light will pass through these lenses. And as it is, it passes through these lenses, it gets bent or refracted. And what happens is that it creates a cloaked region between these optical lenses. That means if I put an object inside the cloak region, well then, when I look through from this end, I should not see the bridge, the top of this Lego bridge, and I will see Smart Hulk's face. 
So I'm going to ask somebody to prove that this isn't a trick and it's not some magic. I'm going to ask you just to look through and tell me that that is in fact the case. Uh, I can see the Hulk, uh, but I can't see the bridge. So you are saying that it works? Yeah, it works, yeah. There we go. Thank you very much. Now, an Iron Man suit, like an exoskeleton suit, or an invisibility cloak, they would be big hits at costume parties. If you go to Dutch Comic Con or any Comic Con around the world, they'd be the ultimate cosplay costumes, right? Be amazing. But would they be a big hit in society? And should we develop them? For exoskeleton suits, I say absolutely yes. For an invisibility cloak, I'm not so sure. I think that such a technology could in fact be weaponized. And in fact, there is a technology out there called quantum stealth that was recently developed. And its application is for the military. Now, not only should we be checking on whether technology is good for society, a part of that being good is that it is unbiased, that technology does not favor one group over another. There are inherent biases in many of the technologies that we create today, whether it's facial recognition technologies or voice assistance. And many of these technologies exclude groups or people. In the Marvel films, Tony Stark built the ultimate, what I call biased or personalized technology in the 2008 film Iron Man. He built the Iron Man suit. And that suit was built for him. Now, later on in the films, he starts to build technologies which are less biased and can be used by more people. An example of that is the Infinity Gauntlet, a technology that featured in the film Avengers Endgame, built by Tony Stark, Bruce Banner, and Rocket Raccoon. When Smart Hulk put on the technology in the film, and by the way, that's Smart Hulk wearing the Infinity Gauntlet, when he put it on, it grew bigger to fit his hand, demonstrating that this technology could be worn by someone with a big hand. But also, perhaps Rocket Raccoon, who also built the technology, could also wear it. Now, this is a toy, and it's designed for adults. And I want to see if it really can be used by an adult. Can I ask you to come up and try it on and demonstrate if that is the case? Okay, and so you want to reach out, and there are some rings to move the fingers. And can you move the fingers? Yeah. <laughs> is it easy or hard to move the fingers? It is easy. It's okay. very light. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so this is an, a, 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 the reason I have this here is to try and demonstrate that certain technologies we build in society have some biases in them. Now, this is a toy. It's for adults. But you should see when, when I do talks, where you have a younger audience and younger mem members of the audience try to put it on, they can't work it because it's designed for just a single group. Now, thinking more seriously about the technologies we have now, our society is filled with biased technologies. That means that some of this technology is not for everyone. We should be trying to make that the case, but there can always be exceptions to this. Now, thinking about the Iron Man suit, once again, it's got facial recognition technologies. He uses Tony Stark in the films, these technologies. In the real world, though, facial recognition technologies are biased towards certain groups, but we still use them every day. And the reason they're biased is because of the data that they are being fed to train the technologies. The machine learning algorithms are receiving data from people who have inherent biases, whether they realize it or not. The Metropolitan Police in the UK have introduced facial re recognition technology, despite the fact it is only 9% accurate and is known to be racially biased. That is absolutely disgraceful. If facial recognition technology is going to be used in healthcare, it needs to be unbiased. But there can be issues with data protection and privacy. And at the moment, the technologies are not good enough for healthcare. Bias does not come from technology. Bias comes from people. So we should strive for the best for society. It's not about having the coolest and the fastest. It's about having the most ethical and the most responsible. I hope that some of you are inspired now to make ethical and responsible and unbiased technologies. But you should take heed from the superhero inventors. In the 2008 film Iron Man, we see Tony Stark building the Mark II Iron Man suit. But the suit does not work first time when he's building it. It takes him a number of days to get it to work. And finally, after 11 days 
of experimenting in the laboratory, he gets the suit to fly and to stably fly. Every success is built on a solid foundation of failure. Failure is good. Failure should be embraced. I have failed in the past and I will fail in the future. And you should not be afraid to fail because there are many lessons that you can make. And the link here to what I've been speaking about is that we have failed in some of our technologies. We have technologies that are biased, that if they were introduced in healthcare, such as facial recognition technologies or voice assistance, I think we would be creating a serious problem, particularly if we want these technologies to be lifesavers. Superheroes have incredible adventures. They use their powers to overcome villains and to save the day. But for me, they do much more than that. Superheroes can act as a powerful platform to inspire responsible, ethical, and unbiased innovation in healthcare. I am going to continue my superhero crusade, and I hope that you will look at the superhero genre a little differently now, because it's not all just about people wearing tights. So let's unite our powers, our superpowers, and walk the path towards super innovation in healthcare together. It's time to think super. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>